Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you today about VO2 max and how I've been using the caliber biometrics um, indirect calorimetry mask in order to test my VO2 max. Now for those of you who are new to performance, um, fitness, exercising, I know you've probably heard of VO2 max before, and I know that you know you may or may not have, um, or you may or may not have heard of it before. You may or may not have come across you know what the definition of it is, but basically it's the max amount of oxygen you can consume um, and convert and utilize in order to create energy. And so what ends up happening is even if your performance goes above your peak VO2. At some point, your body will stall out in how much it can, you know, how much oxygen it can uptake and utilize to, for performance. And so that's what the caliber biometrics um, using indirect calorimetry measures is how much oxygen you're taking in. It also measures how much uh, oxygen is coming out of your system, um, as well as how much carbon dioxide is coming out of your system. And so it uses all that information to calculate what your peak VO2 is. And then from there, you can uh, use a formula to calculate what your VO2 max is. Now, according to Dr. Peter Atia, VO2 max is probably the single most important aspect of longevity. Why VO2 max is so important. The reason that that is the case is that VO2 max is a remarkable integrator of the work you have done to get fit. And that's why strength is a very close second. When you're looking at overall lifestyle, the more physically capable you are, especially as you get older, the less likelihood you are of injury. And the less likelihood you are of injury, the less likelihood you are of hospitalizations, infections, um, you know, just overall life diminishing problems. And so that's part of the Part of the big reason why I wanted to share this, um, share my experience with the caliber biometrics as well as the, you know, the data that I'm getting from it is because a big focus for me is being able to grow old gracefully, being able to grow old in a way where I'm not worried about medications and hospitalizations. You know, I want to grow old and still have fun and still be and still have energy in order to live a fulfilling life. So now they have a specific protocol that they recommend uh, with regards to how to run your VO2 max session and how to you know, essentially calibrate the mask, but also how to time your performance in your VO2 max session. Based on what Dr. Peter Atia talked about, you know, he mentions that you know, when you're gonna do a VO2 max session, you should Warm yourself up first, get a good workout in, and then do your VO2 max test. So you're having people go through a little bit of a workout before they get going. Yeah, and so the other day I was talking to a patient who did his VO2 max test at a facility. It was at a university that he went to do it. It was just like a place where you can go and pay to do it. And I was kind of surprised at what his number was. It was lower than I expected given his training. And I, I said, tell me about the protocol. And he's like, yeah, I just got on the treadmill and they just started cranking it. And I was like, and how long after you started on the treadmill did you hit VO2 max? And he's like, I don't know, five minutes. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's a garbage protocol. They, you were not warmed up and ready to do that. And the reason why you want to do that is because you don't want to be on fresh legs. You want to make sure that you've put some work into the system so that way you're truly testing what you're capable of um, when you've already expended yourself essentially. And so I use the Zwift uh, FTP test, the ramp FTP test in order to do that. Did a uh, quick warm up, quick ish warm up, about 20 minute warm up prior to that. And then started my VO2 max session with the FTP ramp test. And last, I'm gonna share with you a session that I've already put up on the channel before. So if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out. Uh, but it's me racing with the caliber mask on. And the reason why I wanted to do that is so I can show what the in, you know, while you're racing performance looks like. Not only from a metabolic standpoint where you can see my fat utilization, carbohydrate, carbohydrate utilization, and overall calorie um, consumption, 
while you know while in a shortish uh, race. But and then also I'll share with you my VO2, um, my peak VO2, which then converts into VO2 max uh, at the end of that race. So take it away. All right. So as I start my three minutes workout here, let's talk about what the protocol for the caliber biometrics recommends. So the first thing you do is basically, you know, prep your device, make sure it's calibrated, um, charged. And there's, again, there's a specific way to do it where you do a factory reset and give it about a minute or two in order to set. And then you plug your device in for half an hour. And what that does is it warms up the sensors. So went through all of that already. And as I start, so the, you know, from there, they recommend doing a 20 minute zone two effort before you uh, put your mask on. So what I did was I basically started the reset process 10 minutes before I started my zone two, and then I did my zone two. So that way, by the time I was done with my workout or done with the 20 minute uh, warm up, I would be ready. My, my caliber mask would be ready to put on. So after that, you're gonna do another six minutes at zone two. And then once you're done with your six minutes, which is where I'm in right now, is in that two to three minute um, all out effort. And you know, this is probably the harder part for me to gauge what that, and I, I set it to three minutes um, just because you can't really have you know, a fluctuating effort in uh, the Zwift workouts. So it is hard for me to gauge what an all out effort should look like. So I'm doing my best to hold a around 300 Watts and then planning on, you know, kind of ramping it up from there. And then once you're done with that two to three minute effort, you do a two minute cool down followed by uh, stopping the device. So that way you have roughly about an 11 minute or so 10, 11 minute workout session saved and then that's when you go through the analysis and so again this is you know me kind of on my last minute or so of effort and trying to gauge it you know I don't do a lot of Zwift workouts I choose to use races as my workouts because it's a good mixture of you know easy tempo not even tempo sometimes zone two depending on the race you know, easy riding and then short bursts of, you know, a couple minute efforts here and there. But generally I don't stick to efforts this hard this long. And so I tried gauging it to stay within 300, 350 range. And then, you know, looking to push it up as the minute, as my, uh, as I start to end my three minutes here, got, you know, right around 30 seconds left and just pushing it as hard as I can to get to, you know, again, get to, my my max and so it was it truly was like exhausting like my heart rate even though my heart rate's in the 170s right now i was cooked i was hurting at this point and so given a good surge at the very end so that way i can hopefully get a good maximum average of my total effort which is gonna you know at some point hit me you know ensure that my maximum oxygen intake is going to be surpassed by my effort and so as i do my cool down you can see you know essentially what my numbers are but i'm going to jump to the results for this effort as i wrap up here taking off my mask and you can see my peak vo2 shows 3.51 for my session which is you know in liters uh standard liters per minute which is essentially how much oxygen I took in um, at my maximum. And so the equation that Caliber recommends for calculating your VO2 max is taking your, um, your peak VO2, multiplying it by a thousand, and then dividing that by your weight. And so at the time I did this, my weight was about 84 kilograms. And so you see my VO2 right there my vo2 max was around 41 which according to 
um, information out there that's you know a little bit above, slightly above average for someone of my age. Um, but at the same time, I felt like it was a little bit lower than what it could be. So that's why I ended up um, waiting to make this video so I can do another VO2 max session, but trying a little bit different protocol. Like I said before, you know, listen to Peter Atia and others talk about the VO2 max protocol. And typically what people end up doing at, um, at sports laboratories is a ramp test. And so that's what I wanted to do. And I'll jump to that now. So for my ramp test, I chose to do the FTP ramp test, but the light version, um, right? No, this is the regular version. Sorry. At the, I initially chose the light version, but I realized it wasn't going to max out as much as I wanted it to because it, for me, it was putting me at like, like my last one minute was like 300 and something Watts, like 350 or 375 Watts, um, which I, it would have been easy for me to complete that one. So I ended up choosing this one. And as you see, this one ramps up from about 180 watts going all the way out to 700 watts, which would have definitely been more than enough for me. Because um, I can't, while I can hold quite a bit for a minute, I can't do it in succession like this uh, ramp test offers. And so as previous, I basically set up my session the same way. I did a 20 minute free ride around Watopia with the Robo Pacers getting some much needed uh, drops for my SL8 upgrades and then from there once I was ready to start my VO2 max session I had my mask already charged and ready to go and basically just getting it set up as the ramp officially started because again I wanted to wait till you know till I get going in order to um, in order to put the mask on so that way um, the time that I was in the actual, you know, in the beginning of the workout is basically similar to a warm up. You know, it would have been like a three, four minute warm up, um, including the time that I spent on there. So I wasn't worried about, you know, did I grab enough warm up data before, you know, before this session got going. And so just kind of flying through this because I did not last as long as I thought I would. Um, I was fully expecting to get in, you know, get deep into the 400s um, in terms of wattage. But like I mentioned before, doing this test in succession, you know, doing these one minute efforts in succession is a lot harder than doing a typical ride where you might hold, you might jump from zone one, zone two, up to zone five, zone six, and then back down to zone one, zone two, you know, it's, it's, this is that escalating and you can kind of see it in my my calorie graph where it just quickly spikes up um, minute after minute and just you know goes from you can see right now I'm still in a little bit of a fat burning mode um, but and that's you know that's a, another reason why looking at this uh, this chart you can tell that my body took a little extra time to lag from going from fat burning mode to going into you know burning carbohydrates and so you see there, now I'm starting to ramp up the carbohydrate use where the body's finally catching up. And this is where, for me, the exhaustion is starting to set in. Um, and you can see my heart rate's already at 181 and spiking, you know, and just continuing to climb up. At this point, I am hurting. I am taking really deep breaths through the mask and doing my best to hold on as long as I can. As I mentioned before, ends up being not that much longer. So I maxed out on the 375, but couldn't hold the 400. Just had to stop there. I was just completely gassed out. Um, now, I do feel like this ramp test still might have skewed my results a bit, and not because of how I did my efforts, um, in the sense that doing the warm-up first and then the, the workouts. But I think there's a good... Um, a good reason or a good uh, idea behind what Peter Tia talks about and doing, you know, some hard efforts in the beginning. And then, you know, once you get to your, once you want to do the VO2 max test, then, you know, doing a hard, two, you know, two, three, five minute effort, something like that to gauge your VO2 max. Um, so that's, you know, that'll be for a later date. I'll test it the same way. There's been a couple of new firmware updates since then. So I will, you know, 
again, get it tested and see, because as you can tell, or as if you look at my peak VO2, this time my peak VO2 is much higher. It's at 3.86 standard liters per minute. And like I said, I feel like I went a little bit harder on this effort than I did on the first effort, which would explain why my peak VO2 was a little bit better because that is gonna change from session to session. Peak VO2 and even your VO2 max is gonna change from session to session. It all depends on you know, how you warm up, how, you know, what kind of efforts you do, how, you know, essentially how, you know, how fresh you are, like there's just different variables, you know, how hydrated you are, how hot it is outside, how humid it is outside, you know, those things are going to change your results. And so calculating mine and using the formula of peak VO2 times a thousand divided by my weight, you can see that my VO2 max was around 47, um, close to 48, which I truly feel like is the more accurate number. Um, again, the effort level felt a little bit better to me in terms of my, um, you know, the reality of my effort. It, again, it was just hard to gauge that three minute effort. And I'll do their protocol again, just to see if I can get it, get a higher number there. Um, and then use the real, the, the main uh, FTP test to see if, you know, within that 20 minute um, hard effort at the end of the the fitness or the FTP test, it'll uh, it'll show. And so just again, going back over the third race or the third, you know, test that I did is a real world race going through the Scotland smash, which was it, it's a fantastic course. Absolutely love it. I feel like, you know, I feel like I've learned to excel on this course. Um, and so it's kind of giving me false, you know, kind of a false, uh, pretenses that I'm better than what I really am because I can do great on this course, but other courses that have climbs that are longer than, you know, 30 seconds, I struggle significantly. And so as you know, I get to the end of my race here at this point, I was again, struggling to breathe. And, you know, my heart rate is in the upper one eighties. Um, I think I peaked at 188, 189, somewhere around there. So taking off the mask and checking my peak VO2 as I get back into the screen, you can see that my peak VO2 for this session ends up, so as I'm getting into the screen, it ends up at 3.69 standard liters per minute, which again, very close to what I did with the FTP test, with the ramp test. And so that's why I kind of looked at it as like, you know, the ramp test was a little bit more accurate in how I perform and what my actual VO2 max looks like, which in this case, doing the math, do the uh, 369, you know, damn, that's fine. Math, multiplying by a thousand. And at this time, um, as well as the previous session, my weight had come down uh, some. So I was at 81.5. And that brings a grand total up to 45 for my VO2 max. Again, slightly above normal for my age, which again, is, I feel like is a good indication of where I'm at with my fitness. So wanted to share, hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you guys on the next race. Hey guys, it's Miguel from that thing you just watched. Hope you enjoyed that video, whether it was topic on nutrition or racing or the combination of both, feel free to come back. I will continue to put out videos like this and continue to showcase what you can do with smart nutritional strategies, combining that with racing, because that is what this channel is all about. And feel free to check in. If you want to see more racing, click on wherever the link's at, subscribe, and I will catch you guys on the next race.